best friends, but they always disagree. Taylor and Alan, I see in that. Tin Cloverfield Lane. Tin Cloverfield Lane. What do you think about this movie? I liked it. I <laughs> I don't know why. Did I not. Had, Shocker. Uh no, so everything I heard about it was that it's great. That it's like this amazing movie. And uh, I I don't know about that. Well that so everything I heard about it was that it was great. And I watched right. it and I was like, oh no, this was I mean it was decent but it wasn't really super great. Yeah, I mean, it was good, not great. Yeah. Um, but I thought John Goodman was great. John Goodman was great. The ending, let's just, I, I don't want to talk about the ending first, because that's my biggest issue. Uh The ending, okay. I believe, so this movie used to be something else. Um I think it was called The Cellar or something like that. And J.J. Right. J. Abrams saw it. Or J.J. Abrams, people saw it. I don't, I don't know what happened exactly. They saw it and they're like, "Oh, let's, we should adapt that into a Cloverfield story." Yeah, it wasn't originally a Cloverfield story. And so you watch the whole movie and it's, it's one thing almost the entire time, and then the last ten minutes is very different than the the rest of the movie. She gets attacked by aliens and like fights them off, and it it doesn't. Yeah. It, it just turns out that crazy John Goodman was right. Yeah. He knew what he was talking about. And, but, um, it just, yeah. it felt so forced and tacked on to the movie that it, it really did not work. I thought the movie, I thought if she would have gotten outside and, you know, she's looking at the cornfield and it, it would have just faded to black at that point, the movie yeah. would have been so much stronger. Even though you would have had a lot more questions like, well, why were, why was the air so, you know, dangerous and all that? It still would have been so much better than what, what you got. Yeah, I could see that. Um, it, I, uh, I still find it, it hard to make the connection between the first two Cloverfield movies. First two? Cause it's, well, between this one and the first one. Oh, gotcha. So, I don't know. Is it is that a thing that people do often where there's like already a movie and then they just kind of shoehorn it into their own universe? Um, I don't know. Or Probably is that like a J.J. Abrams thing. I, well, because he... Spoilers, but we also watched Cloverfield Paradox and it was the exact same thing again. And it's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's... It's weird. I mean, I guess it's kind of like, it's kind of what Netflix does, I guess, with their Netflix originals, where they just buy up things and put their name on it and make more money off of it. It's. I like how they still call things like the Netflix original, like, uh, like Arrested Development, their, their season. Yeah. Like, is it though? Is it really a Netflix original? Like the season, I guess, but the show as a whole. The show, yeah. Not really. Well, I mean, a lot of movies, they just buy the right to stream the movie. And they'll call it a Netflix original. Yeah. It's, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's just their business model. Yeah. But it's, it's, uh, strange. Like, I can't think of any instances where I've heard of that happening somewhere else. Yeah, I can't, I can't think of anything either. Um, but maybe it happens a lot and we just don't hear about it. Yeah. Who knows? Well, let's go through 10 Cloverfield Lane from the beginning. We can okay. get... So it starts out, she's driving home and gets in a car crash. Yeah. And flips and rolls and then wakes up, uh, like, I want to say knee cuffed to a pipe. Yeah. Is that accurate? Chained, I guess, is another way to say it. But she's got like this, this weird brace on her knee that's Got her connected to a pipe. <clears throat> and John Goodman has, um, is taking care of her. He like brings her food and is like, like kind of real creepy, but is helping her out. Of course. And, uh, she keeps trying to escape. She's like, I need to get out of here. 
and ends up stealing his keys, running upstairs, getting to the door. And, uh, so he, he had told her that you can't go outside. If you go outside, the air is poisonous and it's going to kill you. She doesn't yep. believe him. She goes outside, open, just trying to open the door. This woman shows up and is, her skin is falling off. Um, so she, the woman is dying right in front of her. And so the, the girl, the girl who's kidnapped was like, Oh, John Goodman isn't crazy and, you know, believes what's going on. And then they all become friends. Her, yeah, John Goodman, it, and, and the other dude, guy. Yeah. Uh, Emmett, right? I don't remember his name. I believe it's Emmett. Emmett Smith. And so they're all down there. They become friends. They like, you know, everything's moving smoothly and they're figuring things out, working together. Well, they realize that John Goodman, so John Goodman had told a story about his daughter and led the girl to believe that, um, that the daughter was taken by the mom to Chicago and is probably right. dead. Shows the girl, what, what's her name? I'm going to keep calling her a girl because I can't remember. Uh, Michelle. Is it Michelle? Yes. So he tells Michelle that his daughter is dead and shows her a picture of her. And Michelle ends up finding out or finding. So they, they, uh, they have an air ventilation system and she has to climb up in the vents to go and restart it because it stopped working. While she's up there, she finds a window that's been scratched from the inside that says help with a earring. And it turns out the earring is the same in the picture. Of John of Goodman. Daughter. Yeah, John Goodman's daughter. So she shows the picture to Emmett, and Emmett's like, that's not, that's not his daughter. That's this other girl who was kidnapped and was found murdered right. later. So they're like, oh, John Goodman is a murderer, so he is crazy. He just happens to be yeah, right it, about. It, it thinks you go back and forth with him on what kind of person he is. Yeah. And I, I really wish they would have um, gotten more into the kidnapping stuff, uh, just just for clarification's sake, because yeah. he seemed somewhat innocent um, of a person. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, like maybe he had some mental disorders or something. But like, my impression, and you can tell me if yours is different, but was he kidnapped that girl? to replace a daughter that he did lose and the girl tried to get away and he lost his temper and killed her. Yeah. That's how I interpreted it. It wasn't like, not that this is not, not that that's better or acceptable, but it's it's understandable though. It wasn't like he was raping her or anything like that. Like it wasn't, you know what I mean? He wasn't just trying to be a creepy kidnapping dude. Yeah, he, like, the, the point of kidnapping the girl was because he missed his daughter, basically. Yeah. Um, cause there, there's a one scene when they're playing, uh, it was like Password or something like that. And, uh, Emmett is like, oh, Michelle is a, and John Goodman is like, a girl, a young girl, a small girl. And like, it, it was kind of hit on too hard, but I thought it was an interesting, idea that he doesn't see her as a woman. He sees her as a little girl as, that needs to yeah. be checked. Uh-huh. Because I didn't actually I didn't I didn't really think about that, but now that you say that that definitely makes sense. Cuz there's a few times where Michelle like touches Emmett's hand and John Goodman freaks out that yeah. come off very um I don't know a better word to say, but just come off very Probably. rapey. You know, oh. like yeah, not fatherly. Um, like, <laughs> that, like very controlling and manipulative and like, like this Possessive. is my, yeah, this is mine. But like, it, it feels like he's in love with her in, yeah. in that way. But if the point is that he's replacing his daughter with her, not, so it's not like a sexual type thing. It's just a like longing for his daughter. Right. I just wish they would have um, made it yeah. more clear 
one way or the other. Whatever way they wanted to go, I think would have been what fine. What his motives were? Yeah, I just wish they would have cleared up his motives. Yeah, when I, wonder I say it would have been fine, like that is lost. Yeah, when I say it would have been fine, I just mean in the sense of a movie, not that it's justifiable in one way or another. That would have been okay. Yeah. yeah. And perhaps that was lost in the transition into the Cloverfield movie. <clears throat> yeah, maybe. I don't know. Okay, to me, so... the Cloverfield stuff is just the alien at the end. Yeah, oh, for sure. Like, I don't think there's anything else about the movie. Maybe, maybe the woman who got poisoned was added extra. No, I, I don't. I... I don't, I don't mean it, it got lost when they were adding Cloverfield stuff. I just mean when they were making it into its different movie, if it just didn't come well, over. So my understanding is the movie was done. Really? See, that, that was my next question is, did they straight up buy an already finished movie and tack on stuff or did they buy like a, a script? That they kind of rewrote to fit their story, or how does that work? So I could be wrong, but my understanding was they went to a film festival, saw the movie, liked it, bought it, and then added the Cloverfield stuff to it. Huh. Can you imagine being at that film festival, right? And you watch this movie, and you're like, oh, man, this is a great movie. And you're like telling your friends about it, and then you go to watch it again, and then there's aliens at the end. (laughs) Like, this is not what I remember. <laughs> but I was also on a lot of mushrooms. <laughs> or not enough mushrooms. It's always not enough. That's always a problem. That's that's the usual problem. So they find out John Goodman had kidnapped this girl, and so they decide, all right, well, let's make a hazmat suit and we'll escape. Yep. Um, John Goodman figures out what they're trying to do. Or they, he finds that the scissors were missing. And so he's like, what were you guys doing with these scissors? You need to tell me. Emmett is like, I'm trying to make a weapon because I wanted, or I was trying to make a weapon so I could take your gun because I wanted Michelle to respect me the way she respects you. And John Goodman is like, I understand. I forgive you. Yeah. And then shot him right in the face. Yeah. That threw me off a little bit. What do you think the reason that he has that guy down there is? That guy showed up when everything started going down. Oh, that's right. Yeah. He, uh, at least that's what he said. He, cause he, didn't had, they know, didn't they know each other or he the, knew of him? That guy built the bunker. He was like one of the contractors that helped build the bunker. Okay. And so he knew all about it. He knew John Goodman and he showed up when everything started going crazy because he was trying to be safe. And John Goodman, for some reason, let him in. It didn't really make that clear. Yeah. Um, eh, he just didn't want to be alone. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so they were all together. He, so John Goodman kills that guy and she decides, like, I have to get out of here now. Um, and escapes and ends up pouring acid all over John Goodman. He falls in it, burns his ear off. That dude is resilient in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, a and true fighter. Gets outside. The house blows up with John Goodman inside of it still. And she's standing there and a spaceship, which now this spaceship didn't even seem like it was a part of the Cloverfield stuff. Like, yeah, no, there were no spaceships. No, right? no. There were, yeah. Like, and the other thing was, was this a spaceship or was it an alien? Because it had a mouth. Uh, I, uh, it's weird, right? Yeah, I guess I'm not really sure. I guess it could be either. Um, but it definitely looked like a spaceship, and it blew up like it was a spaceship. Yeah, but it acted like it was organic or a uh, organism type thing. You know, it was very strange. Yeah, perhaps it was. But they yeah. fight, and she throws a Molotov cocktail in its mouth, and it blows it up. Yeah. And she decides she's going to go help the resistance fighters down in Houston. Viva la resistance. And so 
while I think it's a good movie, I don't think I'll ever watch it again. Yeah, I probably won't either. It's, it's like, it's so, I'm not interested in seeing it again. It was pretty, it's pretty heavy to watch, right? Like, you watch it and it's, you feel so uncomfortable. Like, John Goodman does an exceptional job in this. And he, oh yeah, he, he, he yeah, he really does. He makes the movie for me. Yeah. And if it was, yeah, I don't know. If it was someone else, maybe not so much, but he does a great job. And how I, many times, how many times have you seen the first Cloverfield? Um, maybe five times. Five times. Yeah. I, well, I saw it three I've times seen in it theaters. Twice. Oh, jeez, That's right. Yeah. I saw it once in theater and then once just randomly. And I remember like not really enjoying it that much the second time for some reason. Speaking about seeing in theaters three times, uh, when we talked about Cloverfield, I told the story of how I went with my, at the time, ex-girlfriend to her prom because I, we broke up and it was a week before her, our formal and I told her, like, hey, you know, I don't want you to have to go alone. I'm willing, yeah. you know, I, I'm willing to take you type of thing. Well, she listened to that podcast and heard me tell that story and sent me a message and told me she that. She called you out. <laughs> she said that I told her that, no, we're, I'm going to go. I'm still going to go because I paid for my tux already. And that yeah. is, that's not really how I remember it, but just said, to be. That doesn't sound like you. But just, also, you are dumb. <laughs> just to be fair, maybe, maybe there's the truth is somewhere in the middle between those two things. That's not how I remember it, but she also doesn't remember it the way I remember it. So, yeah, but she will never know. She doesn't remember about stepping on my head in the swimming pool, which is the most upsetting part. Oh, I remember that very, very clearly because <laughs> it was just. So crazy. <laughs> um, so like zero to 100 real fast. <laughs> but yeah, no, Cloverfield won. And that, that's what's sad about 10 Cloverfield Lane and the Cloverfield Paradox. Cloverfield won, I think is really good. I think the, Hold on. you know, I, I know a lot of people have issues. Okay. What's that? No, go ahead. I know a lot of people have issues with the shaky cam or the handheld cam and stuff like that. But I just yeah. thought it was such a cool way to tell that story. You know, like the progression and you seeing everything changing and the world falling apart all around you and how things would happen and you know, I, I mean it's not like super realistic or anything, but it's just it's just so it, it's interesting. A, it's an interesting storytelling, yeah. yeah. And uh when you add these other movies that the alien parts, the, the Cloverfield parts, are bad. You're just making the original worse. Yeah, it's... Yeah, I agree. That's the only way to say it. <laughs> but, I don't know. What would you change about 10 Cloverfield Lane? Uh, I would make it the not Cloverfield version. Just a movie. Yeah, just remove all the J.J. Abrams stuff from it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I think I think it had a solid... I haven't seen Room yet, um, which I think would be a similar, somewhat similar story. But I, I just think this 10 Cloverfield Lane oh. had a solid, had a solid story that was really compelling with John Goodman's character that you didn't know if you could trust. And I wish they would have played with uh, considering trusting him more, even once they realized he was a murderer kidnapper. Yeah. Because, because they were safe. Wh like they, well, yeah. What's uh, on the outside is worse. Yeah. Like there was no, there was no like um, investigating that idea at all. No questioning that. Cause you would definitely like, if you were in that situation and you're like, all right, well, if I go outside, I'm going to die. If I stay inside, maybe I'm going to die. You're yeah, and it, it's, it's in, in, in that kind of situation, it's different because he's not like, 
he he doesn't have you kidnapped to eventually kill you. you yeah, know, he, that's not his plan. And if you just go along with with whatever, then you may never die. Not, yeah, but like I think, so th- I think there's the, no imminent need to get out. Yeah, I think the decision to leave is the right one, right? But I I think there it, it was frustrating that they didn't question it at all. Yeah, you know, yeah. like because that's that's a really you know compelling choice of like. Well, what, what do I do now? You know, like, is the whole, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't? Like, yeah. It's just, I don't know. Yeah, it, it definitely had potential. Um, but it, I think it's still a good movie. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely. Mainly because it's John Goodman. Yeah. Especially when he dances. That was so, <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the more uncomfortable parts. That was the best part. John Goodman twerks in this movie. Yeah, like upside down against the wall. <laughs> well, I was just talking about when he's at the um, the jukebox. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that or not, but he's like yeah. picking out a song. And he like bends over and it's got his hands on his knees and starts shaking his butt up and down. Classic John Goodman dance. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, this, it's a, it's a good movie. I recommend just turning it off as soon as she gets outside. I think it's a much better movie at that point. Yeah, I agree with that. Although if you're listening to this and you listen to everything, it doesn't really matter. (laughs) Yeah, you might as well just watch the whole thing. Yeah. All right. Well, anything else about 10 Cloverfield Lane? That's all I have for that one. All right. Well, you can follow us on Twitter at I seen that pod, like us on Facebook, or you can go over to patreon.com slash I seen that and vote for Taylor or I, uh, whoever has the least amount of votes has to pay a punishment at the end of the month. And you'll also get all our episodes two weeks in advance. That's a pretty good value for a dollar. I got to say, I'd say it's tremendous value. <laughs> I don't know if I believe you believe that. And uh, we just want to say thank you to Boss Play, our sponsor of the show. It's an escape room in Oceanside, California.